Rick has the finished product here. If we've jumped ahead, he's about to garnish it. We're just going to put a little parsley on top, and I, and I saved a few of these uh, yellow tomatoes to put there in the middle, too, so that there's still a little crunch to those yellow tomatoes. And uh, I think it's ready to eat. Looks fabulous. Looks fabulous. Speaking of eating, yeah? you did a lot of it, I bet, <laughs> while you were shooting Pennsylvania diners and other roadside restaurants. I've which... done a lot of it all my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a great show. It's been a real favorite here at WQED, and our thanks to the members of WQED who helped make your shows, like Pennsylvania Diners, possible. Um, in the course of watching your show, viewers met one cook, one chef, that has become a real favorite of viewers here. And uh, I think I need not introduce her in any other way other than saying, if you watch this, you'll get a sense of what our next cook is all about. The person who's been here the longest, more than 15 years, is Dutzer, the cook. Even she had an earlier career. <laughs> I was a beautician. Now she keeps the chili and the other pots bubbling, and she opens in the morning. 5.30, I get here, set up the diner, wait on people, come back and cook. It. Dutzer, uh, that's my main girl, Dutzer. She, uh, she just runs a place when I'm not around. In fact, she runs it when I am around. Well, that's Dutzer <laughs> on the job, and here's Dutzer in the QED kitchen. Thanks for joining <laughs> us. <laughs> Dutzer says she's scared to death, but we're going to lead her through this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I called Dutzer and I said, you know, you were so great on that show. We'd love you to be on here and share with us some classic diner soup. We've had a lot of, you know, elegant soups and some, you know, California style cuisine and we've got some more interesting things coming up, but let's just get some basic diner soups in here. She, she said, I'm, I'm the gal for you. I can do it. <laughs> I don't know if I said that or not. Okay, I put those words in her mouth. But uh, you did say you do know classic diner soups yeah. and uh, absolutely nobody knows it better. So we're going to start with mushroom soup. And I hear yours is great. It is I very good. So. I mean, I've, I've, I've been over there to Pip's Diner in the West End and had this uh, mushroom soup. It, it's a certain day, though, isn't it? Thursday. Thursday is mushroom soup day. <laughs> um, and what time in the morning do you start all this? About 8. About 8 o'clock? OK. So wh what's the first step? Put your, more, put your butter in your thing and saute it. Dump in your mushrooms. OK, hold on. We're still That's we're melting this butter. It's, it's far enough. Mm -hmm. You've already sliced these mushrooms. Yeah, I did. I cheated. <laughs> I need a little hotter. There we go. You usually make it for huge quantities. Yeah. This is like kind of hard. <laughs> <laughs> this is for your basic family of four. We saute these until they're, they start to get like a little translucent, a little soft. It takes a couple minutes. Yeah. Now, I know that in the show, when we first see Keith, he's bringing in that big box of something into your kitchen there. Um, does he go and buy your mushrooms? Do you buy the mushrooms? No, he does. He buys them down the strip? Everything, yes. Uh-huh. So uh, he brings you mushrooms every Wednesday? No. On Thursday morning? Monday mornings. Monday mornings you get them, but the soup isn't ready till Thursday. You don't make the soup till Thursday. Make, he gets all the produce on one day. OK. So these have sort of been coated with um, the butter margarine. Now what happens? We have to wait for them to become translucent. Yeah, wait for them to get translucent a little bit. <laughs> See, which makes this the perfect time for you to go to the phone and dial 621-5808. Whether you like mushroom soup or not, we gotta wait a moment while this becomes translucent so you won't miss anything while you're making that phone call of support. A phone call that says, I believe in public television, I watch WQED, I love the cooking shows, and I'm willing to do my part to make them possible. And stop and think about the incredible service, the value that we bring you when we do these cooking marathons. Dutzer here is going to share her tips, her secrets from what goes on behind the scenes at Pip's Diner. She's going to share them to you at no charge, conceivably it seems at no charge, but in fact we do call this sort of TV on the honor system and we ask that you support us and help make it possible for us to pay for all of those cooking shows that we bring you every Saturday and every weekday around the lunchtime hour. Those shows cost a lot of money for us to purchase uh, or to produce or whatever it may be. Those costs go up each and every year and your dollars make it possible for us to do that. Are they translucent yet? Mm, they're good enough. They're good enough. <laughs> they're good enough for I, what we're doing here. I want to know, Dutzer, who taught you to cook? My mother. Yeah? Yeah. And, like, did you cook at home before you, I mean, did you, you didn't cook in massive quantities when you were young and first cooking. Being the oldest of eight, yeah. The oldest of eight. <laughs> I guess you did cook for a big quantity. Okay. <laughs> Not as much as at the diner, though. No. Okay. Okay, just add a little bit of chicken base. Chicken what? Base. A little chicken base. 
I've never even heard of chicken base, but I also, you know, don't know a lot of things about cooking. Chicken base. Cook that in there until it's melted down. It's starting to smell good. Yeah? Chicken huh. base. Chicken base. Can you get it at the Giant Eagle? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Shop and save. To Shop and save. To prepare a super broth, dissolve base in boiling water as follows. Hmm. Serve as a broth or add any combination of pasta, rice, or vegetables to make a complete soup. I'll be darned. All right. And take the wander flour. Oh, this is what makes it a little bit uh, thick. And you sprinkle this on until your mushrooms are coated and real thick. I'm not used to working with this kind of pot. But. <laughs> <laughs> the pots you use are so big they don't shake and roll around when you're stirring them. So you want to get them a good coating, good thick coating. They're almost pasty. Of Wondra flour. And you, you use one of these, you know, things right there in the diner. Right at the diner. Okay. It doesn't lump. It doesn't? No. That's the word wonder. We, uh, <laughs> we dropped a little here, putting it back in. Good. And you okay. take half and half. Okay, there's no measuring spoons or cups, just... Hey, it looks great already. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing? Mm hmm Okay. One quart of half and half. Any okay. soup with a quart of half and half in it <laughs> is gonna be great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but we're gonna cut it with a little milk now. Just a little. Whole milk. <laughs> Add a little bit of white milk to it and just let it simmer. I actually think the first day I went to the diner, this was the soup. Um, no? I mean, because uh, Brian Butko from the Historical Society took us over to Pip's, um, I don't know, it must be over a year ago now. And uh, there's, someday there's, there's two soups over there. There's two soups every day. Two soups every day. Um, and always, uh, is one of the two soups Dutzer's famous chili? That's every day. That's every day. So there's <laughs> Dutzer's famous chili, which they claim you can tell her, you know, <laughs> frame of mind by how hot the chili is, <laughs> um, and two soups every day at Pip's Diner. And, and I just ought to say that I know that a lot of people say, where is Pip's Diner? It's in the West End. It's on Woodland Road. Woodville Avenue. Woodville Avenue. I always say Woodland he Road. He knows how Wood, to get there. Wood, yeah, the, and it's hard to find. Um, but it's definitely worth the extra effort. It's right across from Rena Camp Lumber. Rena Camp Lumber. That's what I always tell people. Um, and uh, it's, uh, you know, a great place for breakfast, lunch. They close after the lottery every night, so there's no dinner served. No. Um, but the best breakfast and lunch in town, um, Pip's Diner. It, and uh, Excuse me, if I may get back to the cooking. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else we need to do to this? That's it. Just, we'll, just let it cook Just some let more? it simmer and it'll thicken up on its own. Oh my gosh. That's so easy. And, you, and it's so and it's good. good. Rick tells me it oh, is so good. It's delicious. I can't wait. All right. Well, you're going to make another soup for us in just a few moments. What's that going to be? Cream of broccoli. Cream of broccoli. Another great basic soup that you can make in I have a bowl of this short that's period already of time. done. All right. We'll taste that when we come back. Right now, we're going to let you know that this mushroom soup recipe will be included in our Essence for Soups and Stews cookbook, as well as everything else we've been making today. Here's how you can get that and show your support for WQED. Back in the kitchen where Dutzer has brought an already finished version of the mushroom soup. And I'm going to taste it for the first time. Rick's already had the pleasure. <laughs> mm. At the diner. Mm. You're in a diner, right? I can taste that half and half. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, is that good? But I, before we went on, Dutzer said the trick is fresh mushrooms. Yep. Yeah, I mean, that's what makes that soup great, I think. Yeah, it's got a real mushroom taste. And, you know, while we're at it, catching up, you got to look at Rick's uh, clam chowder, which is beginning to look gorgeous. It's we, uh, been cooking down for about, what, maybe half an hour now? Yeah, and we uh, snuck look the clams in there mm -hmm. during the break, so uh, everything's sort of simmering together. Mm, beautiful. It'll be great tomorrow, too. All right, <laughs> back to diner fare from Pip's Diner. Dutzer's gonna make cream of broccoli soup next. How's this work? Cream of broccoli is very easy to make. You steam your broccoli until it starts turning bright green. And it starts turning bright green and a little bit softer than this. So, I mean, there, we don't even have, it's a, maybe one uh, 
bunch, one of, bunch of broccoli. A broccoli. How many bunches do you start with in the morning when four. you make this? Just four? Yeah. Okay. Those are not that different. No. Well. Let's pot four times that size. About that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, once it starts getting translucent, you take your chicken base. What do we do with the chicken base? I'll oh. get it. Oh, it's back over on the table. Kind of all-purpose chicken base. The Dutzer secret ingredient chicken base. <laughs> Add a little bit of chicken base to it. That was just like a couple tablespoons full, right? About a tablespoon. Tablespoon full. All right. Okay. We up. just had a little bit of water in the bottom just there. Just a little to bit steam of water the... just to steam it. And you work the broccoli soup the same as you do the mushroom soup once this is all melted down. Oh, well, then I know what comes uh, you next. Can see in that, Here's your half and half. You can no, see how beautiful flour. The, oh. the green is. I'll get it. Gold medal Wondra flower, once again. No lumps. No, no lumps. lumps. Add it to your broccoli as it's steamed. You want to get them really coated like the mushrooms were, right? Like the mushrooms, make it thick. Is it uh, calcium and vitamin A in it <laughs> because of the uh, broccoli? Did you uh, did you have to make soup before you came over here this morning? Did yeah. you go to the diner this morning? I made the soup I brought here this morning. Ah, the, the, the mushroom soup that's already here. So people that are over there at the diner today are eating mushroom soup. No, I just made a wee little pot just to bring. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any soup over there just today? So we can no. Taste it. no soup today. Did you taste this, Rick? No, but I will. Here's a clean spoon for you. Good deal. It's delicious. I, I bet there's some people over there at the diner watching all of this. Um, <laughs> we say, well, I have to say hi to Peggy and to Kelly and to, who else is over there today? Is Keith there today? Linda. Linda. Jeannie. Keith. Denise. Yeah, and there's actually a Saturday crew there, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. crew different than uh, Add your half and half, add a little bit of milk, oh, let it wow. simmer. Isn't that good? Done. That's excellent. It's really, really flavorful. Actually, people may be wondering, what's happened to all these soups and stews that have been made this morning? <laughs> they're they're all right behind us, and the crew, during these breaks, runs over here and fills little bowls, and we've all been eating all these great uh, soups and stews, and uh, we hope that you'll run to the phone and give us a call at 621-5808 and, and make a contribution to help support programs like this. I, this is really, we sometimes tend to overlook it, but I think this kind of cooking marathon that we've become famous for now um, it's really a wonderful thing that public television can do. It's almost like being in the kitchen with the whole community, sharing recipes much like you would do in a wonderful kitchen at home. So uh, we hope you're learning all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got the... Uh, now, is this another soup where we're basically done? We just done. have to all wait have for to it to cook down? All simmer up, yep. All right, and you brought for us the finished product, which I'm going to pour into this bowl. And you can see the bits of broccoli in there. And actually, it's, it's the flour and the, the chicken base and everything that makes it thicken up it's as it cooks. The fresh and the fresh vegetable. And the fresh vegetable. Makes the flavor. Good deal. Big chunk of broccoli. Actually, I know that my mom used to make a green bean soup like this. Very, very, very good. Very different taste. The same ingredients except for the mushroom and the broccoli. But a real broccoli taste. It's fabulous. Here's another look at the, the telephones and another bit of information about how you can get this recipe and others.